as you've probably seen our tagline, we are doing a Q&A today. We got all the questions from our Instagram. If you're seeing this just on YouTube, we've got an Instagram page called Rugby Grub, uh, which is a professional rugby nutrition, professional rugby nutrition page, page. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead with uh, the questions now, and we're both gonna answer them. We'll ask each other, you know, back and forth banter, all that kind of stuff, all the good stuff. Um, yeah, let's go. On the way to being free. From Ollie, um, ever had a very bad injury that meant you meant you mentally struggle to play at your highest level? Question mark. Yeah. So, if you've seen our introduction video, then you'll know that I mentioned about my injury. So, I've been injured quite a lot in the last four years. Um, I've had two Liz Frank injuries on both my feet. Um, I've had some pretty bad concussions and I've had lots of niggly stuff. So one of the things that would stand out for me is mean that I mentally couldn't play as well as I think I could have um, was my, my I tore my list frank completely in my right foot, which is my kicking foot. And as a fly half, obviously physically it's quite important to make sure my foot's fully functioning. And even by the time I got back and everything was technically fine, I was still really struggling with my kicking because ex to start with it was extremely painful. And you know when you're about to kick a ball and you know it's going to really hurt. Obviously, it's going to like it's going to play on your mind. So that would be one thing. And then it just took me probably the rest of that season um, until I was fully confident kicking again. So my kicking was kind of all over the place. Um, which obviously being a fly half and priding myself on that, I really struggled with uh, from a confidence point of view. Um, so I'd say that. And kind of now as I've got a bit older, I've kind of my foot's fine. Um, and it doesn't play in my mind anymore, um, but that would probably one that would stick out to me. So next question from Jayla. Was it hard to play rugby, and do you have any advice for someone who is just starting out? Um, it wasn't hard to play rugby, really, when I was younger. I, I assume that's what she means. Um, I say now it is hard. Rugby is a really physically demanding sport, especially at the professional level. Um, so I'd say, like that is obviously uh, at our level really hard, but I say maybe uh, you know if she's starting out, um, getting to local amateur clubs, I'm sure around I don't know where she's from, but around the country is very accessible. Um, I know that they're trying to build that side of the game uh, grassroots up. So um, I I never struggled because my dad pushed me into it. I don't know what yours. Yeah, same here, and yeah. it was always really fun, and yeah. like physically it wasn't as hard, obviously yeah. you get a run around, but when you're younger and getting into it, yeah. um, you got loads of energy, so I wouldn't say it was hard, it was, it was just really fun. Basically. Yeah, really fun, which playing. is the main point, yeah, just having a lot of fun, and um, yeah. yeah. And then do you have any advice for someone starting out? Starting out, uh, as I said, have as much fun as you can, um, yeah, just make sure you get as many touches on the ball as possible, get your skill set up, and just keep enjoying it, um, that would be my main point. Um, sometimes as professional rugby players we can get caught up in um, the seriousness of our jobs and sometimes we forget that why we started playing which is because we love the game and love having fun with our friends and building that, um, that those teammates and friendships that you have for the rest of your life so I think yeah that would be my main advice. Um, how does a typical, typical match day look for you with eating, preparing and getting ready? So I could probably go on forever with this question. Um, I'm not going to speak about match day necessarily. Um, I'm going to speak about the day before the game because nutritionally it's way, way more important and there's actually way more evidence about the day before the game um, than actually on the day of the game because it doesn't really matter on game day eating-wise. Um, so the key thing is preparing for a game the day before nutritionally is eating enough carbs. So it's called carb loading and it doesn't involve eating a big bowl of pasta in the evening. Well, it might do, but it's not really just that. Um, the aim is, is to get between four and eight grams per kilo body weight of carbohydrate in through that whole day. Um, and the idea behind that is to basically, your muscle stores where your muscle get energy from is their glycogen stores, which is where carbohydrate is stored. And that's essentially how your body makes energy by using carbohydrate um, to fuel your muscles. So on game day, it's pretty crucial that you have enough carbohydrate and glycogen. 
so that you can run around for as long as possible to simplify it basically and be as powerful as you can and execute all these skills you can. So that in terms of fit eating would be the main thing, getting enough carbs the day before in. Um, the day of the game, um, just relaxing for me um, is kind of my main prep. I kind of take everything I can out of the equation so I make sure my bag's ready, I make sure I know what I'm eating, that I don't have to cook. So I can just kind of sit around, see, the, see some of the boys if I want to go for a coffee or just sit at home and read and relax. So. I know that I'm kind of pretty fresh mentally and I can kind of turn it on when I get to the game. Um, there's no point in being stressed on game day and worried because um, it's just going to hurt performance. So preparing wise, I pretty much make sure that I get my nutrition right the day before and I'm as relaxed as possible going into the game. So this question's from Ryan Roche. Roche. Um, what does a full training day for a pro rugby player look like? Um, okay, typically we will come in around what, 7.38 um, and we will have breakfast at the club. We get breakfast provided for us um, and that will sort of array from like eggs, sometimes sausages, beans, like two types of eggs, like, like protein pots um, and then there's like a smoothie section which is really cool. Um, and then we'll probably have meetings um, after that and then into gym. And then we'll probably have more meetings after our gym session. Um, depending what day it is, we'll have like a skill session around there, a 15 minute skills, high and co coordination blast. And then we'll probably have our main meeting, which will be about half an hour to 45 minutes long. Um, and then we'll go into our rugby session. So um, that will typically, probably on average, about an hour to an hour and a half session, um, varying in intensity. After that, we'll normally come back in, and if you've got any niggles, you'll probably go to the physios. Um, some boys like to use the ice baths, or, and then some boys like to go to the pool, or just simply stretching or mobility. Um, and then after that, sort of, you, it's your free time. So from about three, three, three thirty, it's sort of your own time. You can just go home and do do what you like, get on with your life. Um, yeah, and then that's the rest of the day, really. That's about it, isn't it? That's about anything. Pretty much. Um, obviously, our weights are different on different days. So, yeah. just for a bit of information, I guess we would typically um, on a Saturday game we typically do upper body on a Monday because um, we still haven't fully recovered from the game and lower body is t typically more intense uh, taxing on the body. We normally do our lower body on a Tuesday. Um, we've got a few more days to recover and we have a day off after. And then we do a power session on a um, on a Thursday um, and maybe a bit of upper body. Um, just making sure we're getting our explosive speed higher and obviously it's less taxing on the body when we're tapering our training down for the Saturday game. Uh, what should you put, uh, well, this is from Holly Brand, what should you prioritise after a workout, protein or carbs? So for building muscle, obviously protein is broken down to the amino acids which helps build that muscle that you've broken down during the gym session. So for muscle protein synthesis, protein is the key thing um, and you are aiming, so Around 20 grams is enough to help you maximize muscle protein synthesis. Anything more than that actually doesn't have a significant effect, but anything lower than does. So at least 20 grams of protein you should have within an hour or two. Um, all other things being equal, depending on training, um, after training. So carbohydrate, like we spoke about earlier in this video about preparing for a game, will help you refill your glycogen levels that you would have used during your session. Um, so it's not actually going to help you build any more muscle, but it'll make sure you recover so by the time you train again, your muscle got enough energy to do their maximum output. So it's not about necessarily prioritizing one or the other. You should be aiming for around 20 grams of protein, and then I believe it's around one gram per kilo body weight of carbohydrate within one to two hours after a session to help refill those muscle glycogen. So if you've got a carbohydrate target for the day, um, just prioritize it around that so you don't end up overeating or undereating. Um, the one thing I should say as well, that if you've got a session after, um, prior using more carbohydrate will obviously help you fuel for that, so you're refueled and ready to go for your training session. So typically, like Harry mentioned earlier, we would do our gym in the morning, train in the afternoon, so it's important for us to get enough carbs in. So it's not really about prioritizing one or the other, but getting 20 grams of protein, and then around one gram per kilo body weight of carbohydrate, ideally from a higher GI source, so it gets into your bloodstream quicker and converted into glycogen quicker. So that's a pretty nerdy answer, but hopefully that helps. So we've got a question from Tom here. Um, it says, breakfast, question mark. Well, I assume he means, what's my favorite breakfast or what breakfast we, should we have? Maybe we'll just do all three. 
So my favourite breakfast is avocado on sourdough with a couple of poached eggs. I know, with a nice coffee. What are you? Lovely. Um, I like a breakfast burrito, so hash browns, bacon, avocado eggs, all wrapped up in a wrap um, with probably some mayo. And is there some on our page as well, so if you want to check that out. Is there? Yeah, yeah there is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go check that out. Um, what would be a good breakfast for someone on a training day when they've got a big day ahead of them? What's a good thing to go for breakfast? Well, I sort of, in the morning, I'll come in and have normally have like a, probably a granary, like one piece of granary toast with some eggs on top and then I'll make myself like a smoothie so like a mixed berry, some whey, some probably almond milk rather than semi-skinned, um, maybe some peanut butter if I want a bit more fat on the day but normally that with a bit of spinach just like whizzed up and I have that alongside my um, my uh, eggs on toast so I like to keep it quite small on a training day because I don't like to have too much in my stomach um, so I'll make have the liquid just purely to get some more like calories into me but I wouldn't be going massive on a breakfast but you probably do you be a bit yeah I mean I, I simply would because I eat more than Harry does weirdly enough um, but I think some of the stuff Harry says that the way he thinks about his food is really interesting because like we can't tell you like we're never going to sell you a meal plan because a you need to pick the food you like and you need to understand what's in your food so Harry with the granary toast and the fruit and veg in his um smoothie he's getting enough carbohydrates so he can help fuel him um, he's getting enough protein um, to help him hit his overall daily goal um, and he's getting in loads of micronutrients um, which is great for health and immunity to keep him training so on a training day just making sure that you'll eat what feels comfort you, comfortable to you but then you're also getting in enough carbohydrate and protein to help you fuel your training as you can tell he's probably given all the scientific answers and I'll just sort of say the non-scientific answers I'm a massive Norse basically and I get way to anything I do so I like to know numbers and I like to know exactly what I'm doing. I'm just chilling. He's just chilling. He's just more interesting basically. <laughs> How important are macro splits for building lean muscle once you've hit your protein goals? Cool. So probably the biggest question. Yeah, I'd say loads yeah. of people ask this question and we've kind of looked into it a lot because we've we have typically through most of the time when we're training we would track our macros and calories mainly. Um, but depending on your goal, it's not all about macros and there's no perfect macro split because what we know from recovering, from building muscle, you need to, having enough protein is really key for building muscle and recovering muscle. Um, so you should roughly be aiming to eat around two grams of protein per kilo body weight. So basically, if your, if your target is purely body composition, Carb carbohydrate and fats don't matter massively when you're in a calorie surplus if you're gaining or a deficit when you're not. That's the main thing about body composition and hitting enough protein will mean that you can build muscle and hold on to muscle. How about thermogenic effect? Yeah. That's There's loads. Um, I'm a scientific gnaws like <laughs> him sometimes as well. If you are gaining or losing weight, the main thing you need to think about is your calorie requirements um, and your protein. So as you said, there's no perfect macro split. However, when we get into performance, as we mentioned a few times, carbohydrate is super important. So making sure you're eating enough carbohydrate around training um, and the day before a game are really important as well. So we're not going to say there's a perfect ratio, but the key things to think about depending on your goal is protein requirements, calories, um, carbs around performance, and then also food quality, make sure you're eating enough micronutrients, which is kind of over overlooked sometimes when we get into macro splits because just having a variety of fruit and veg and grains and things to get enough fiber in and micronutrients it's actually probably going to have a bigger effect than you think on your performance because if you're ill all the time because your diet is bland, even if you've got the perfect macro split, um, you're going to be ill so you're not going to be training. Um, so that's a big thing to think about as well.